Welcome to The Baby Show and to Made for Mum's step-by-step guide on how to choose the right buggy for you and your baby. Hello, I'm Susie. I'm editor of madeformums.com and we're an independent parenting website. We test and review thousands of parenting products. We have journalists who are parents and we also work with families at home. And our aim is to help parents make confident choices. And we can do that in terms of products with our trusted and unbiased reviews. So today, I'm gonna be talking about buggies. And there are so many on the market. It can be quite overwhelming, although obviously really exciting when you're getting to choose your baby's first pushchair. So I'm gonna take you through, step by step, questions to ask, some of the points to consider, and also some of the terms that you may hear. And that way, you should have the confidence to choose the right buggy that is for you and your family. Now we do get a lot of people saying to us, go on, go on, tell us which one really is the best. And what I would say is, there really isn't one that is right for everyone. What there is, is there are buggies out there that are really gonna be great for you and your situation and your needs. So we're gonna start off by looking at the different types and the names. So we have buggy, pushchair, pram, travel system and stroller. Lots of different terms that you hear used. So buggy and pushchair, we use them interchangeably. You've basically got your frame, which we call the chassis, and then your seat here. And that could be a buggy or a pushchair. But what about a pram? Well, a pram involves this behind me, the carry cot. And as you'll see here, it's got a really firm, flat base. It's got a mattress inside. Basically, your baby can sleep and be completely flat. So, and what we say is, we call this pram mode. When you have a, a carry cot on top of a buggy frame, that's in pram mode. And I'll show you how we can easily add the carry cot onto a buggy frame. Pop that down. And I can take this off like this. and then just pop it in each side and click it in like that and now this is in pram mode so what is a travel system a travel system is simply a car seat that attaches to a buggy now you'll find that not all car seats fit all buggies and in fact not all car seats fit all cars so it's really vital that you check the car seat that you're interested in buying is actually compatible with the car you're going to use it in. You'll find that car seat manufacturers will generally have lists of compatible cars on their website. So it's very easy to attach a car seat to a buggy. I'm just going to take the carry cart off here, pop it down here. And then you'll find that often you have adapters which are used in order to attach the car seat. Not in all cases, but it's very simple just to pop them in. Of course, you need to remember to take them with you. And then take the car seat and you just position that over these car seat adapters and click in like that. I'll pop the handles down here. And now you have your buggy in travel system mode. So why do you need a travel system? Well, it's because when you go on short journeys and you might be going for a walk or maybe popping to the shops and you drive there, chances are your baby will probably fall asleep or be very, very comfortable in their car seat. When you arrive at the place you want to be and use your buggy, you don't necessarily want to disturb your baby. So it's very simple. You, you just take out the car seat out of the car and you pop it straight onto the chassis. And it means then your baby is very satisfied. However, it's not something that you do for long periods of time. There's a, something called the two hour rule, which advises that your baby in a car seat like this, where they're slightly upright, shouldn't be in that position for more than two hours at a time. And this is because often babies will fall asleep when they're in a car and, and also when they're on a, on a chassis and they will they kind of hunch forward slightly 
and it just starts to restrict their, the airways and the oxygen that's going around their lungs and their body. And so at that point, if you are going, for example, planning a long car journey, then what we'd recommend is that as you're coming up to the two hour point, you stop the car somewhere safely, you scoop your baby out of the car seat, they'll no doubt wail in indignation, and all that wailing will bring all the oxygen back in, flowing through. You can even take them for a little, very quick walk, maybe around the car, and then pop them back in, and that's enough to then be able to carry on with that journey. But it does mean that if you're planning to use your um, buggy in travel system mode, then make sure you're not doing that for the whole day and your baby's just sitting in the same position in the car seat. For longer trips out, then you're really looking at a, a carry cot would be advisable. So what are strollers? Strollers are lighter weight. They're often more compact when they're folded up and they tend to have smaller wheels. They're great for travel and also if you live in a city, you may want something that's much smaller and lighter weight or if you live somewhere where you really don't have much space. A lot of them are only suitable from six months plus because they have the seat that, where your baby will be sitting more upright. But what we're finding is that there are actually more companies now are creating strollers that are lie flat and come with, you can buy a cocoon or a little baby nest. So it's like a soft carry cot really. And also some where you can even put a car seat to make it travel and make a travel system. So there's lots of alternatives out there, but what you find is that it really depends on your circumstance, which one's gonna be right for you. One of the key things to think about is where are you gonna be using your buggy most? Do you live in a built up city where you're gonna be pushing it a lot on very busy crowded pavements and up and down curbs? Or do you live in a town or village where you're going to be pushing it on pavements but also have more access to uneven ground? Or do you live right out in the country where you're going to be doing lots of long, vigorous country walks, really um, rugged terrain? Also, are you going to need to be taking it on and off public transport? And the reason we think about these things is because it has an effect on the size of the wheel and the type of wheel that you might want to choose. The general principle is the bigger the wheel, the easier it is at handling rough terrain. The small wheels are great in terms of that versatility and manoeuvrability in tight spaces. And what you find is, um, this is a great example, this pushchair has these fantastic big wheels at the back so it can really handle some rough terrain but then smaller wheels at the front to give it that maneuverability in the more built up places. However if you are a real off-roader or you actually want to go jogging with your buggy when your baby is around nine months you can actually start to run with your baby then you're going to be wanting those bigger wheels and actually you'll be looking for air filled tyres because these give the smoothest and fastest ride across that rough terrain. Have to say, air filled tires do get punctures, so you'll need to carry a puncture kit. You also get foam filled tires, which absorb some of that impact going across rougher terrain, and they don't get punctures, um, but they can be a little bit heavy. And then you can get smaller plastic wheels that are very lightweight, very compact, and perfect for going in and out when you're in the city. Obviously small wheels again and that light compact, if you are just looking for a city buggy, a stroller will probably fill your needs because um, it's much lighter, it has a compact fold. So you really need to think about what do you need it most for and which type of wheel is gonna suit me best. So now we come on to folding. How easy is it to fold and unfold? How compactly will it fold up? Can I do it one-handed? Do I need to take the seat off in order to fold it? Well, what we would say is that every single bucky folds in a different way. And while that might feel a bit confusing if you're looking at a lot of buggies, in fact, once you learn your buggy, the way it folds and unfolds, do it two or three times and you'll have the knack. You'll be doing it in your sleep. In terms of taking um, a seat off in order to fold it, what it does mean is that if you're lifting a buggy in and out of a car, 
then actually it's much lighter if you separate the seat or the carry cop from the chassis. It's lighter to pick up. However, it may be slightly more bulky in your car seat, um, in your car boot. And also, if you are able to fold with the seat on at home and you're storing it folded, then you have one component rather than two. So it's a real lifestyle choice. So I'm now going to fold this one. So I take the seat off. And then I put this. And in fact, this one is self-standing. So again, think about how you might want to store it. Some will self-stand, some won't. In terms of folding shapes, some are quite big, some are quite long and thin, others are more compact but a bit deeper. So again, it's really good to have a look at the different sizes of when something is folded. If you know you're going to be putting your buggy in and out of the car quite frequently, then one of the key things to remember is how easy is it to pick up. So it's not just the weight of the buggy, it's also is there a little handle or is there something I can grab onto so that you know when I'm bending down like here I can pick it up and easily lift it, it's not putting too much strain on my back. Some buggies such as this one come with a carry handle which is great in terms of carrying it around but it also means that it's automatically higher so that then it's slightly easier to put into a, into a higher up thing such as a car boot. You'll find as well in terms of compactness and fold that with some buggies you can take the wheels off if you're really struggling to get your buggy into a car boot. Um, you can take them off and lie them flat and that will reduce the size of, of the fold when they're folded. Um, but it is a bit of a faff if you're constantly putting wheels on and off. And remember that you're probably going to need that boot for other things. It's one thing, hallelujah, it fits in my boot. But remember, you'll probably need some more space as well. And in terms of unfolding, again, it's really just, you will learn very quickly the way that you can fold or unfold your buggy. And you'll get very, very fast at it. So one of the questions we get asked quite a lot on Made for Miles is, do I need to buy a carry cot? You'll find some buggies will come with the seat and the chassis, but there's an additional charge for the carry cot. Well, we know that babies need to be in a lie flat position for the first six months. So you might be wondering whether if your buggy does offer a lie flat position, but doesn't have a carry cot, do you really need one? And we'd say in that situation, have a think about the value that a carry cot could give you. For example, some carry cots now are suitable for overnight sleeping. So fantastic if you're doing a lot of traveling to grandparents or friends, you've got somewhere for your baby to sleep overnight in that scenario. You also got these, um, with carry cots, you've got real sort of solid sides and protection, especially if you've got a baby in the winter months, from all that the weather's gonna throw at us, you've got some you know, really cozy place for your baby to be. But a carry cot is an additional, can be an additional purchase, and it's an extra piece of kit. So it's quite interesting that um, eye candy with the peach and also the lime and also bugaboo with the fox now come with a, a carry cot that turns into the seat. So it's not something you do instantly with a switch, but it's something that's fairly simple to do. And, and it means that then you don't have that additional purchase and you don't have an extra piece of kit to store once your baby is six months old and potentially looking to go into a seat position. One thing to think about when choosing your buggy is your height and the height of your partner or anyone who's likely to be pushing the buggy a lot. You'll find that most buggies will come with an adjustable handle in terms of height and that really helps in terms of if, if you're like me, a very small person and you have a very tall partner. And it's interesting as well that even the height, different levels of height will affect how it feels to push a buggy. It's all to do with your sort of centre of gravity and where that push comes from. So it's really worth, once you've got your buggy, just have a push different height handles because you might be quite surprised at how different it feels when you're pushing it around. And then we come on to the basket. And I smile because 
baskets are incredibly become incredibly important when you are someone as a mum like me and you were going taking your buggy out and you seem to have so much stuff you think you're going to use your basket for shopping well believe me there'll be loads more other things including your changing bag and everything else all the paraphernalia that comes with having a, a young baby or a child and so think about the size of the basket they really do vary and also think about how easy it is to access that basket and particularly we find that with some when some are in the um, pram mode they're slightly harder to get your big bags in so have a look some will be easy access generally once the child's sitting in the seat they're all pretty good to access but do think about that if you think you're going to be having lots of stuff with you carrying stuff around look for a good basket you may have heard about single to double buggies or convertibles. These have become much more popular over the last few years. And it means that you have a single buggy that by adding a few elements, you can turn into a double buggy. You don't have to buy a whole new frame. And the eye candy peach is a good example of this. So I can use it as a single, and then if I extend my family and I have another baby, then I can turn that into a double buggy. Now, fantastic, if you're someone who loves planning, who knows this is what you want, it's obviously a very economical way. You're not having to buy a second, a, a double buggy, if you're lucky enough to, to extend your family. On the other side, the one thing that's known is you just don't know about babies. And, you know, Mother Nature, we don't know when, that, when you're going to be able to extend your family. So, you know, for others who like to live, I need a buggy now, then, you know, you may not be wanting to plan ahead. You do tend to find that single to double buggies, because they need to take more weight, because they need to take the weight of two children, they'll probably be slightly heavier in terms of the chassis. We're seeing a lot of that, you know, increasing to lighten up, but they're still likely to be a bit heavier than just a straight single. So again, think about what's important for you. So what seat positions do you want your buggy to have? You'll find that many push chairs enable you to have the seat facing you, so parent facing, but then simply you can turn it round, turn that seat around to face the world. And you will do that when your baby's a little bit older, sort of from six months plus you may want to, or with a toddler. And you can now start sort of pointing things out and you're facing the same way. But obviously having that reversible seat just means that you have a lot of different choices. And then also have a think about the recline that you've got because particularly with toddlers, you'll find that they'll often fall asleep. And if you can recline it, it just makes that sleeping experience a little bit more comfortable and their heads are not sort of lolling on the side. They're having more of a, a nice nap. So have a look at different reclines. They do vary quite a lot depending on, on the buggy type. So now we're on to the money question. Just how much does a buggy cost? Well, you can get a no frill stroller for 25 pounds and you can pay a thousand, even 2,000 pounds for a high end, top of the range push chair. What we do know is that if you do your research and work out what you need, you can find a really good buggy within your price range. So remember, do your research and think about um, the extras as well. Sometimes something might look a, a bargain, but actually you've got to pile on quite a few extras in order to use it in the way that you want to use it. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that's really helped you. And remember, we have hundreds of reviews on Made for Mums, which will answer lots of your queries and give you the detail that you'll probably be looking for. Remember, do your research. Think about your lifestyle needs. How are you going to be using that buggy? How are you going to be transporting it? Where are you going to be storing it? What do you really need from your buggy? And I assure you, you and your baby are going to have a brilliant time. Thank you.